part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Welcome back, everybody, to Podcast 616, the official podcast of Earth 616. I am your host, Damon Royster. Today, we have a real treat for you. We are going to be discussing, um, I think, um, cinematic excellence and uh, achievement in film. Uh, producer Michael does not feel this way. Um, and I have to let him know that this we actually are talking about the greatest movie ever made of all time. Um, all hits, no scripts. Uh, we are, of course, talking about the fourth uh, Batman film in our Batman coverage. It is 1997's Batman and Robin, a.k.a. Nipplegate 97. This movie is perfect. There's nothing wrong with this movie. Every choice was correct. Let's start from the top. George Clooney would always bang. He is so hot. He's great. I love how much he does not care about this role. And he really phones it in. But like it's still George Clooney in his like ER days. And he it's great. I love a do-nothing queen. Um, Chris O'Donnell, I will marry him. I don't know how. And I know he's like straight. But like I will find out. This was overwhelming for me. The um, My childhood horniness. I was like, oh, this was a big awakening for me. Um, listeners will remember uh, previous guest Tim Lyons talking about how Nicole Kidman was a sexual awakening for him in Batman Forever. This was the one for me. Uma Thurman is fully a, do, giving a drag performance. And um, I'll say this about Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I'll, I said this about Paul Giamatti in the film Big Fat Liar. Same goes for Arnold Schwarzenegger in Batman Robin. Best role of his career. Schwarzenegger has never been better and will never be better than when he's saying ice to see you <laughs> he's perfection i mean the suit's a little bulky i'll say that the mr free suit a little bulky but the makeup when he's just in his robe dancing to i'm mr ice christmas he looks good um and alicia's oh my god and alicia silverstone i'm not gonna be like the movie and forget that she's in this thing she's in it i love batgirl the only the only live action batgirl besides the adam west series and they got fucking Cher from Clueless to do it. And she's great. I love the motorcycle scene. I love the neon gang. I love, the one thing I don't love is Alfred. I still, it's my least favorite Alfred. I wish he died. I was like, thank goodness. What a great way to get rid of this burden on the Wayne um, estate. Hmm. Okay. I could end it there, but no, I have two games. Uh, we need to uh, reclaim this movie for good um so i have two amazing guests to help me reclaim this my first guest first time on the pod from chicago writer actor improviser improviser teacher truly uh, the I, i've never said this to his face but um uh, one of the funniest people in chicago i've never uh whatever i saw he was in the show i was like oh this is this is gonna be good this is a good show uh he's a legend he's a great please welcome and i just learned how to say his last name please open to your ears clayton marcherson Hello. Oh, thank Adam. you. Thank you. That was really nice. I didn't know you liked me so much. I was like, oh, Damon hates me. No. <laughs> hey, and honestly, it's a great way to start with me. Just assume, <laughs> just assume dislike and then wait for me to reveal. I do that with everybody, unfortunately. No, no, this is great. I'm so excited to talk about this movie, Damon. I, oh, my God. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. Hey, if when I sent out the request uh, and you, I believe you, you wanted this one specifically. You were like, please yes. give me Batman and Robin. Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, and I love to honor requests. And uh, I wanted to do that for my second guest because uh, this is her second time in the pod. And I do feel like I owe her one last scene on this podcast talking about the, um, what is that man's name? That freak? That monster? That actor? What is the actor's name? Wait. And, oh, my God. Uh, well, she was here to talk about Morbius, which stars. Yes. Jared Leto. Thank yes. You. Jared. Oh, boy. which i also it. requested you did. <laughs> so that's on me yeah i i guess i meant for your own good i'm giving oh you yeah a better movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man but you hear her already that is the lovely sounds of actor and improviser katie nathan hello oh, katie. Man. thank you for having me that whole intro i was just like i need to just i need to talk about this like it was so hard not to talk during the intro. I am so happy to be here. Happy Welcome. to discuss. Absolutely. And just off the bat, Katie, was Batman and Robin better or worse than Morbius? 
Oh, so much better. I mean, yes. a perfect movie. It really is. A perfect we movie, need Michael. To reclaim it. Yes, yes. Um, well, let me just go for first question for both of you. Um, let's uh, start with uh, Clayton. Like, what is your um Mm, I guess like uh, your relationship with this movie. Uh, we don't have time to go into the whole Batman and lore, but like Batman and Robin, like was this your first time watching it? No, I had seen it many, many times as a young man. Uh, also because of Poison Ivy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> had a bit of a sexual awakening of my own. Not to be the Tim Lyons of this movie, but it, I mean, and I was uh, at the right age for. Well, I, I liked Batman Forever when it came out. Because, you know, as a young man, I like Batman. And then this came out, I was like, this is going to be even better. And I was right. Uh, <laughs> I loved it immediately and watched it a lot. And then years later, revisited it and was like, ooh, this isn't quite the masterpiece I remembered. But mm. watching it last night, I was like, oh, no, I was wrong. This is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it slaps. I love a 20-minute opening sequence. Um, we don't even we don't even see Bruce Wayne for a half an hour. Um <laughs> Just straight into Batman. Katie Nathan, same question. Uh, your history with Batman E. Robin? Very first time watching it. I was aware of Nipplegate while it was happening in the late oh. 90s, but it was very much, I mean, that was not my thing in the late 90s. I was more of the clueless focus, mm -hmm. um, but just absolutely blown away. I believe I walked around my house last night after watching it, just yelling, they don't make movies like this anymore. And they really... <laughs> don't and they, they don't. should they don't they don't make movies where your one of your villains does a whole strip tease out of oh a gorilla my suit my notes just say gorilla we're gonna get to the gorilla oh my god michael i can't believe you didn't like this movie i can't believe you didn't like this movie i mean i can what see what is it. not to like <laughs> it's there are challenging <laughs> moments i think <laughs> I mean, I I wanna I wanna break the bit, but honestly, I don't think it's a bit for me. But um, I don't think it is for me either. I thought it was so much fun, Michael. So you don't like fun? Miami is wasted on Michael. He lives in the funnest city. My gosh, um, I just want to so I want to just give space um, for the gays. I think this should be watched every Pride Month. Uh, mm. You should watch this movie. There's just something like I knew like I when I started watching, I was like, OK, I remember this being a little gay Um, because I think Chris O'Donnell is very hot. But the first image when the bat and the robin mm. connect, did you see where it, it like glowed a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And the I what mean, would be the crotch of the bat? <laughs> <laughs> and what would be the crotch of the bat? Exactly. <laughs> uh, Are you guys anybody watch Battlestar Galactica? Yeah. The new one, when the, original? Uh, the remake when they were like sexy robots, yeah, yeah, and their spines would glow, yeah, <laughs> would glow red, yeah, just was giving me that. Um, so we immediately launch, uh, from there into the outfits. Um, Clayton Margerson, I can't help but notice that you are wearing, um, a shirt that is detailing your nipples right now. Uh, did you, <laughs> did you, uh, did you identify with the suit up scene at the beginning? I did. You know, there wasn't quite enough bat butt for me because we only get like one of each. And I'm like, I don't know, man, we could go for more. Uh, it's, it, it, you know, that's my only real complaint. But love the nipples. Love that there's nipples on his breastplate. It gave George R. R. Martin some fodder <laughs> for his books later on in life. So that's nice, too. Uh, yeah. Anything that connects up with uh, the <laughs> Dance of Dragons universe. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Is that what they call it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the DOD, the DODU. Yeah, exactly. um, DODU. Dodu, I call it. <laughs> a real Dodu. I just, I was watching it and now that I've like, I think this is my first time watching it since like having onset experience. And like, I'm just now like, man, between takes, what were they saying when they like, they would walk onto set with those nipples out where people just like, looks great, George. <laughs> And it's so heavy too, that costume. So heavy. He talked later about it. I remember this because he's like, he couldn't lift his arms, which is Whoa. why every scene he's like kind of swishing around oh with the cape. It's, I think it was like 80 pounds. It's like insane. Wow. <laughs> wow. Because it's just like molded rubber all over him. So he said it was, if Batman dressed like this, he would get his ass kicked. <laughs> no, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like the nipples, and I'm so glad that you called out the sheer laziness of 
George Clooney's performance, I feel like he thought mm-hmm. the nipples just did the work for him. Like he didn't <laughs> need to bring a character. He's, you know, it's his voice. It's his mannerisms. I mean, just straight off ER, walk next door, same performance. I feel like it was ER. Then he did the movie One Fine Day with Michelle Pfeiffer. And she's like, have you heard of Batman? And mm-hmm. then he does this movie. <laughs> Katie Nathan, um, so my read on um, George Clooney, and I felt like this at the time, like he was uh, casted because he is so Bruce Wayne coded in real life because yes. he was this like longtime bachelor, yes. was never going to get married. Um, so, so my question uh, is like, how did you, how did you like George Clooney in this role? It's weird because you're right. It seems like it would make all the sense of the world, but it just doesn't. It's like he's somehow less of that guy on mm-hmm. this set. Like he just seems extremely normal. Um, like I Very. said, I feel like we're doing nothing with the voice. We're doing nothing with the physicality. I mean, Uma Thurman and Arnold Schwarzenegger are clearly bringing it in the biggest way. The the trio, just I just was so disappointed, but especially George. Oh, you were disappointed in our three. I want to call them the Bat family, but you got fucking. Yeah, the Bat. Well, I would say I would say more so. Alicia and Alicia, Alicia. I say Alicia. <laughs> George. I, I mean, I do think Chris O'Donnell had, he brought it. He did. He did deliver for me. Yeah. Uh, Clayton, I'll give you uh, the floor to speak on uh, the boy wonder, Robin. Um, how old do you think he is? That's he, the question I was asking. I, he's got to be like 30, right? Like, it, <laughs> it's incredible. <laughs> I was like, yeah. this guy is, shouldn't he be moving out now? Like, what's going on? Oh, no, no, no. His entire family perished in a trapeze accident. And so he was adopted by the wealthiest man in Gotham. Uh, right. Yeah, I would stay too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even after your 30th birthday. Stay in my house. Especially after my 30th birthday. I, also, I'm getting hurt <laughs> out there every night, like getting my ass kicked. I'm like, I can't be like stumbling back to some apartment or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alfred is dying. Couldn't care less. Agree. Does anyone? Does Agree. anyone? This is your time. I'm no. I. I. I'm gonna gloss over that plot. So this is the time. If you want to get in, the penny. Just very disappointed all. with this Alfred. I forget if I said this on the pod already, but he's such a eat your vegetables kind of old mm-hmm, man. Mm-hmm. Like Ugh, eat your pea. Like I didn't uh, teach you how to clean up the house while I was dying. And like. Okay, I'll say this about Alfred. I found it very disrespectful when we were getting the Mr. Freeze origin story and Alfred just rolls his eyes like, oh, another supervillain. I'm like, yeah, this, this man. Respect gonna cause, him. I think he's going to cause another ice age, you fool. And he's just like, just ignore it and it'll go away. And you know what? That's, that's how Trump gets elected. Anyway, sorry. Alfred voted that's, for Trump. I said it. That's it. There Did it you is. Talk? I thought there was a moment near the beginning of the film where George Clooney is telling Alfred that, you know, he's the only one he trusts and you get these big brown George Clooney eyes and the eyelashes and he's kind of looking at Alfred and I was like, they're going to kiss. They're going to kiss right here. I would hate that. Well, I mean, it would make his boyfriend Robin jealous. Um, He does kiss him later. He does. Yeah. When he's dying. When he's like, I love you, old man. Yeah. Even that scene, a little horny. I was like <laughs> amazed. Every scene in this movie is yeah. pretty horned up. That's 1997 for you, I guess. They were running well, wild in the streets. The other thing I wanted to say about the Alfred performance is I feel like it's giving, you know, those uh, movies where the, the woman is dying. So she's just like coughing into a handkerchief with like a little bit of blood. It, it, it's mm-hmm. giving that for me. It's like we're meant to believe he's dying, but he's not. He's not bringing dying. No. I will say I liked the disease he had was the same disease that Nora Freeze had. Oh, which, which so that was a nice like little bridge. That is um, nice. Which brings us to Nora Mr. Freeze. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Clayton, do you want uh, Clayton? Do you want to talk about your favorite character, uh, Nora Freeze? <laughs> I did love that she had no lines in the movie. <laughs> I was like, yeah. did you say a single word? <laughs> I feel like that character is never spoken until. Um, there's a Harley Quinn like adult animated show on Max. Uh, it's really funny. It's really good. And uh, Nora Freeze is voiced by Rachel Dratch. Um, and she's oh, that's just fun. Out about yeah. Um, so we got our Mister Freeze, um, Katie Nathan, uh, producer Michael. He does research on all of our guests, and um, we actually 
found that you were uh, a member of this little ice hockey team um, yeah. for a bit. At yeah, the ice hockey team from um, from hell. Yeah, can you That's talk us. to us about? Yeah, can you talk to us about what it was? I can't. Sorry, I'm just mad. I'm just seeing what they were doing. Can you talk to us about what it was like to organize the museum heist where you had to freeze everything? I mean, the level of preparation that went into that was intense. Typically, we just play ice hockey in hell, but here we are yeah. in a museum. The situation has to be just right. We didn't expect that uh, Batman and Robin would have their own uh, embedded blades in their shoes that popped out out of nowhere. We've never seen either of them ice skate before, and yet their footwear immediately turns into ice skates. Can I? Okay, real quick. I just want to say they got the debrief on Mr. Freeze as they were on their way yes. there. Yes. Which means they're always ready to ice skate. They're always ready to ice skate. I love that. These are not, this is not a special pair of shoes that we grabbed specifically for this. They are always ready. You never know. You never know. I mean, if that's me, I'm like, yes, we get to use our, I want to acknowledge, I want to hear them acknowledge like, yes, we get to use the skates. Right. Ever since Captain Cold was sent to Arkham, we can <laughs> we never, never get a chance to use these anymore. Like I want to high five between the two of them. We are so excited to use these skates. Yes. Honestly, any form of like joy. Yes. For working together. They, these two are at each other's throats, literally the whole movie. This is a very long opener and I do want to move on, but I'll just say it, you know, frozen dinosaurs, ice skates, rocket ship. And rocket then ship. a full ass rocket ship. I can't, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I've seen this movie so many times. I forgot he takes off in a rocket in the first 20 minutes. Truly, <laughs> mm-hmm. really, again, this is so, I feel like it's so pre 9 11 for me. It's just like the yeah. innocence, the joy that we are bringing to filmmaking, the ridiculousness. Like, I don't think we as a people can make movies like this anymore. I don't think we have it in us. I think we're too hardened. This is just. They're throwing everything out there. I'm loving it. That That is such a brilliant thing to say. This movie truly has, we've never experienced a, a national terrorist attack yeah. uh, on, our, nope. Not uh, us. on our soil. Not so us. we're like, yeah, we're going to have this Eastern the European economy Mr. Freeze. Well, we are naive. Oh, yeah. We all got our, bat, our Batman credit cards. Mm-hmm. Never leave home without it. Nope. I really want no, to. No, we are a different America. Michael, this episode might just be that gorilla scene, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, are we cool to move on? I'm, I'm just going to move on to Poison Oh, Island. I did have one other thing oh, that okay. I loved from this scene, which is where yeah. uh, Mr. Freeze, there was a line I loved where he's like, the only absolute in this world is everything freezes. Yeah. Is that Not true? <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> you can't freeze vodka. Absolute. What's funny is you can't freeze absolute vodka, and that's hilarious. No, I didn't know that. Mm. No, you can't freeze vodka. Yeah. You can't do oh, it. I've been doing it all wrong all these years. Put it in the freezer. Keep it yeah, nice and cold. throw it in there. It's fine. All right. So um, Clayton Murdison, uh, producer Michael, like I said, does research, I guess. Uh, you were actually at this, um, the non-UN uh, bidding war for the new Bane uh, product, I'll say. Um, uh, what like what what was your bid like what what would you use the super soldier serum for like what what were you interested in when you went there? Well, you know, I I went with a friend, so that was nice because we could kind of you know go have these on a super soldier army just in case we wanted to take over. I'm thinking like a small country. I don't need much, uh, but uh, the big issue for me was when he went into the other room and we were just standing there with the super soldier and he wouldn't stop flexing and we were just watching <laughs> him do his thing yeah. and yeah he just killed two guys right in front of us so that was you know I, I was feeling some feelings but i also didn't want you know i was like well we came all the way down here i took a cab to south america <laughs> so i feel like i need to walk out of here with something you know what i mean well, you find yourself part of this panel of bitters the most offensively stereotypical panel of like bad guys from around the world. Like we've got a guy in a turban. Like it is just, uh-huh. they are going for it. It's like, these are the bad guys. Yes. And you, and you know, they're bad because a woman was killed in the next room and they're like, whatever. Okay. They didn't tell anybody. I mean, Bane, uh, we'll listeners. We'll talk about Bane later. 
<laughs> Producer Michael's not having a good day. We'll talk about Bane later with the the Bane of it all. <laughs> um, that's to come. But this, I think, was the world's first introduction to Bane. And um, oh boy, Ooh. I I hate it. I do hate it. I do hate it. I yeah. I I can't say much about this Bane. Did you catch that they reused the same shot of him flexing two times? Yeah. No, that's great. <laughs> Like when Poison Ivy, Ivy gets resurrected, she's like, oh, Bane, dear. And he's like, oh, it's the same <laughs> shot. That's great. Up. It's like Looney Tunes where they're just reusing the background. They're just running in circles. Yeah. Um, all right. I do love his luchador mask that like he wore for most of the movie. Uh, that I was just like, this is so funny that they would just <laughs> put in a luchador mask with tubes coming out of the back. Like, what and- do we have around? What can we grab? And they said he was like a serial killer. So it's like the mask must have some scientific value <laughs> in some way. Why? Why'd they put it on him? And then he's like, he never takes it off. I was like, you know, it's he's kind of on the loose at one point. And you're like, oh, he's going to take the mask off. Yeah, take know. your mask off. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I love his incognito look too. Where he has the, like <laughs> the fedora and the trench coat like he's a ninja turtle. <laughs> and he still has the mask. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he got a mask on? Oh, it's so good. I felt the same. This is jumping a little bit later, but Please. at one point, Mr. Freeze pulls up in this car that is like so insane. And it's like, you know, we see you coming. Like you're in this yeah. ridiculous car. Is it the one with like the spikes on the front? Yes, the spikes. Yeah. yeah. All the better for him to barge into brick walls. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the fucking. Bane with the fedora hat. It's incredible. Okay. Um, bearing the lead, I'm so sorry. Pamela, what's her last name? Isley. Isley. Oh, yes. Doctor. Do- doctor. <laughs> doctor. Thank you. Doctor Pamela Isley. Let me see. What did I write about this? I feel like she was just spitting bars with her. I love this character. I mean, I think the Poison Ivy performance is, I have a lot to say about that, but mm-hmm. I love Uma Thurman as Dr. Pamela. This is a great performance. I love this. I love her as a character, as a woman, and I love the performance of Uma, her take on it. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I think she really did what the movie was asking of her in a way that... Absolutely. Like, Clooney was like looking at the script two seconds beforehand and going, oh, Yes. You know? <laughs> I mean, Uma and Arnold are on another level performance-wise. Absol- absolutely. I love when we first see her, she's just doing this like notes to self thing on a tape recorder. Yes, which yes, is yes, like, yes. What a great way to catch us up on who yep, she is and I her character that. motivations. Yeah, and she's like sharing this laboratory with this like lunatic in the, like the next room. And she's like, like you know, I should go check out what he's doing. <laughs> I love what she said to like Dr. Woodrow and his Gilgamesh wing. <laughs> she's like, great. The Gilgamesh uh, wing. And it's like as people are like screaming in pain, she's like, hmm, what could that be? <laughs> so weird i'm just in here with my plants so dr woodrow so she basically she's doing shit with plants and Mm -hmm. then he like takes her venom concoction and puts it into bane to make the ultimate super soldier all purpose venom it does it all (laughs) ladies it does it all (laughs) could even clean your counters find you a venom that can do it all (laughs) (laughs) and she did wait i just want to say can i just read this quote i think i wrote this verbatim um from dr woodrow when so Pamela Isley sees the Bane getting created and, you know, Dr. Woodrow takes her into back into her space and he goes, and she's like, you're crazy. I'll make it so you can't even like teach or whatever. And he says, I respect your opinion, but sadly, I'm not good at rejection. I'm afraid you'll have to die. And he just kind of throws her into shelves and throws shelves onto her. And then what? She's consumed by the earth because of chemicals? Oh, yeah. That's... Mm. Also, that's John Glover who played uh, Clamp in uh, Gremlins 2, another great movie. I'd, I'd love to come back if you ever do that one on the podcast. <laughs> but, uh, uh, he... We're really strain if we're doing Gremlins 2. <laughs> I know. I'll pencil you in for Gremlins. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just, you know what? I just want dibs on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, he. I love this actor. I'm such a huge fan. And I was like, oh, I forgot he's in this movie. And when he pushes her, he does this insane, like, ah, like scream. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> He's just having the best time. Absolutely. It's absolutely wild. It's absolutely wild. And it's also, 
freaking Joel Schumacher. This is literally what happened to Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman Returns. Like a man pushed her out of a window. She resurrected as Catwoman. Then a man <laughs> puts plant shit on a woman. And she resurrects. Katie Nathan, talk to me about the Poison Ivy performance. Um, what was singing for you most? The accent, the Mae West accent, <laughs> the like North Atlantic. Why? What is this? What is this voice? I mean, I love it. And it mm. is, it is like a full drag performance. It is so over the top. I mean, the costuming, the makeup, but the performance is just, and I want to say like the contrast between Dr. Pamela and Poison Ivy. I mean, yeah. these are two distinct characters that both deliver. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And I'll probably, I haven't said much about uh, DC villains and they're like the psychology to them. Um, or the psychological nature to the DC villains. I'll probably do that more when we start doing the Christopher Nolan Batman movies next week. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> I do think DC has better villains than Marvel, and but Marvel has better heroes than yeah. DC. That's yeah. kind of how I feel. Um, but yeah, th that is such a good point that like the there's always just this little like um, switch that goes off that lets you know like, oh, I'm no longer yes. Pamela Isley. I am Hoyes yeah. and Ivy. <laughs> I have a hard time not rooting for these two villains, Mr. Freeze yeah. and Poison Ivy. I mean, they both come from a good place. Mr. Freeze is just trying to save his wife. Just trying to save the wife. Poison Ivy is just trying to save the world. Mm -hmm. Are they uh, a little misguided? Sure. Yeah, I was really on her side very early. Oh, wow. And uh, yeah, when <laughs> except when she killed John Glover, I was like, no, leave him in the movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh, yeah, when, when she's like given the speech uh, as Pamela Isley to yeah. Bruce and all these, you know, upper crust. Mm -hmm. Oh, at the observatory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. In the observatory that's held up by a statue. Yeah. With hands, I was like, how did they get up there? <laughs> Do you have to take an elevator through the arm? <laughs> yeah, just of the through statue? the veins. There's, there's so many like full huge sculptures of people just throughout the city of Gotham. It's insane. It's so wild. I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> he's just holding up the observatory. Mm -hmm. Like it's, you know, at the beginning of the Lion King. <laughs> so mm -hmm. It was really amazing. Uh, I started laughing so hard. And then they go back there later, of course, yeah. for the, the climax. For the dedication. Yeah. <laughs> Which I thought we did in the first observatory scene. It's like, here, we want to thank Bruce Wayne for this amazing telescope. And we're all gathered. And it is this upper crust crowd. We're taking photos. We're doing interviews. He makes a speech. But that's not the dedication. The dedication is later. And we're going to dress up for that, of course, which we need to. Yeah. But oh, oh, you got to. I was just like, like, we're back. We're back to talk about the telescope again. Oh, I mean, it's all the right. It's a big telescope. And yeah. also, I love how they're doing a botanical garden um event just when poison ivy gets to town mm -hmm. who who knew what luck <laughs> oh and the theme of that party at the botanical garden was troubling uh bid on women <laughs> i was like what is going on here where <laughs> you've got like the the drummers and the dancing and like the shirtless guys and i'm like all right makes sense so far but yeah then it's like mm -hmm. and now we're gonna bid on which woman wears the diamond is that what it was i didn't understand that i think I so. thought they I... were bidding on like i thought it was like win a date or bid on a date i mean it is who wears the diamond but i thought the men were also like the implication was i get to take the I, this woman is mine, at least for. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was the energy they were giving when they were bidding. Yeah, and then of course, McGilla Gorilla shows up. Well, we're we're here. Let's let's talk yeah. about this gorilla. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, lots of drums. It's also you know a little racist, coded racist. It's mm -hmm. a little racist. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. It's like all because all the women are like from different lands. Yes. Um, much like you know the not UN. <laughs> the yeah. Beginning. Yeah. 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 The Ununited Nations, I think. Uh -huh. thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes, the Ununited Nations. But then this gorilla shows up and everyone's like, oh my gosh, what's up with this gorilla? Um, <laughs> uh, Clayton Margison, I think you actually uh, do have this right. You did the choreography. Um, oh, that's so cool. For, Clayton. Yeah. What, what was your inspiration um, for this dance? Well, you know, it's uh, it, it was tough. I got an advanced copy of uh, Titan. And uh, I was really inspired by that scene uh, where she dances on top of that fire truck uh, and mm. everyone is, you know, kind of confused about how they're supposed to feel. And I was like, you know what? 
this would be even better if she looked like Grape Ape. So I put her in a purple gorilla suit. And, you know, Uma is really easy to work with. She's open to suggestion. She doesn't mm-hmm. mind, you know, you can do a line reading. You can show her the dance beforehand. And she doesn't mind. She's she's cool with it. You know, I heard that uh, the reason, you know, it was kind of like the jumping off point for her partnership with Quentin Tarantino was working with you and understanding, like, this wow. creative collaboration. Right, exactly. Also, I kept telling her to take the feet off, you know, so she can have her bare feet up. So that I think that helped sort of pave the way for Quentin in a couple of ways. Yeah, I always love that note. Take the feet out. Uh, <laughs> take them out. We got to see more bare feet. It's a technical term. Yeah, I've been in the industry a while. <laughs> you know, and it shows from your knowledge. Okay. This scene, honestly, this is my favorite scene in the whole goddamn wow. movie. Wow. This is where they really, I mean, yes, we have the climax, the dedication of the telescope, but this for me is where I feel like the filmmakers put all their focus. This and, scene. And can I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say a word I'd never say on this podcast, uh, on the superhero podcast. I'd never say this word. I'm going to say it here. Shakespeare. Mm. This is Shakespeare. With like the, yeah. the little, the love potion, the yeah. Midsummer Night's Dream, um, yes. the mistaken identities. It's, yes. it's just, it, I, it's a dream. It's a dream, Michael. It's a perfect movie. Um, well, you know, we were also, play. Clayton, you were talking about like rooting for Poison Ivy. How do you not root for her? I mean, mm-hmm. If we really think about it, if you found out that you could kill someone by kissing them and you have a love potion, I mean, who is not going to use that? True. How can I mean, we begrudge her for using these powers that she didn't ask for? Yeah, especially on those Gotham or those Arkham uh, security guards. Boy, those mm-hmm. guys are some of the most evil characters in the movie. I couldn't believe it. The guy, when the guy has an eye patch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, laughing at Mr. Freeze, who's who's sick. He's an ill man. Yeah. And they're like laughing at him when he can't, you know, breathe outside of the cold. Um, wait, I also back to the grills. I just want to say, um, this is something I thought was really fucked up. This was like a plan by Batman and Robin to catch Mr. Freeze by like yes. using this diamond as bait. People froze, I think, to death. Uh mm-hmm. he put they put a lot of innocent civilians at risk uh for this. And I'm like, this was your plan to risk so a lot of Pomp and circumstance to lure him. I mean, the mm-hmm. first diamond was just in a museum. I mean, couldn't it just yep. be on display somewhere? Couldn't it just? Yes, I. I Did agree. we need to throw this racist party? <laughs> and they wear their Batman and Robin costumes to the party because I was yes. like, oh, that's right, Not Batman really. and Robin are here. Not Bruce Wayne, who is no. giving the diamond. To I them. mean, I think the invitation, or maybe this is the dedication at the end. At one point, there's an invitation that's like. Hosted by Batman and Robin. It's yeah. like, oh, are we just available for bookings? We do birthday parties. We do dedications. Mm-hmm. Well, How many got, people are like, signal. yeah, just like watching this on TV or whatever, going like, what are they doing there? Like, <laughs> my buddy just got robbed. Where are they? Where are they? <laughs> yeah, the city is overrun with uh, criminal villains. Uh, please help. Um, and also, the best moment of this scene for me when they're bidding on Poison Ivy and. Yeah. He, I think it gets up to seven million, and yeah, wait, Batman takes out his bat card. Never leave home without it. When I first saw this, I thought it said Visa because I just was like trained for that, <laughs> but I, I looked at it says like Goth card or something. Yeah, and it says Batman Forever. I noticed on it, and I was like, wow, they're <laughs> referencing the other movie. Well, and are we meant to assume that if the credit card is like what stops the bidding because you know he can now go as high as whatever that the rest of them had cash? Yeah. Huh. I guess so. I don't know. They're all they're all rich, but no one's as rich as Bruce Wayne. Uh-uh. It was them. so much about that scene I didn't understand. <laughs> I didn't understand what they were bidding on, what they were hoping to get out of this. And I also was like, so is this what the diamond is being used for? Just to like have ladies wear it? Like I I just I don't know. I wasn't yeah. totally clear on much like the jump they have later that Batman yeah. doesn't let Robin go over. I was like why is this jump dangerous? I was yeah. not really clear where they were going or what it looked like because the city's all CGI. It was really hard. At times, my eyes were just like unfocused. I was like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah. You know, it was a little messy. And sometimes we just don't know what we're looking at when we're looking at a thing straight on. But I'll tell you right now, what you're looking at right now, listener, is going to be a break. Um, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, and when we come back, we'll talk about Batgirl and how she is phenomenal. She thawed the city. She knows computers. 
I love Alicia Silverstone. Anyway, um, Pocket 616, we'll be back with more Batman and Robin. I can't imagine why you would not finish this conversation with us. Please keep it right here. Part of the Press Play Podcast Network. What's up, everybody? Chase Smith here from the Chase Smith Podcast and Cavs on the Break NBA Podcast. And I'm JD, host of the Hyman Podcast, part of the Press Play Podcast Network. And we are super excited to bring you a brand new show starting next Tuesday, the Fanfare Podcast. The Fanfare Podcast is all about your favorite movies and our favorite movies and the best moments in cinema. To help guide our discussion, each episode will feature one classic. And we will grade this movie using a report card-like scale A through F. We're going to be grading categories like acting, directing, cinematography, the score, and even the movie poster itself. And we're not featuring a movie report card. We'll be sharing our movie rankings, franchise deep dives, actor and director interviews, and everything in between. Movies have been a major part of our lives, and we cannot wait to share our thoughts with you. Our premiere episode will drop Tuesday, June 27th, and JD and I will be reviewing Raiders of the Lost Ark in preparation of the release of Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny on June 30th, the fifth installment of the franchise. Join us on the Fanfare Podcast, available on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Hey everyone, this is Don Mike Mendoza, the host of Producing While Asian. Join us in Season 2 for more conversations with actors, artists, producers, and more from Broadway, Hollywood, and beyond every other Wednesday on the Press Play Podcast Network. And we're back. I think it's getting good. Uh, I think my bad. I think, you know, I think by the end of this, I'll, I'll be Batman. Um, okay. So, uh, Katie Nathan, so this was your first time watching Batman and Robin. Correct? Yes. Yes. Fascinating. Fascinating. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, or thank you're welcome. you. Thank you, you for the opportunity. Uh, but you, you, you'd said that you were a clueless fan. Um, yes. Yes. Blue clueless. So when you saw the titular, you know, Kelly clueless, herself, Thrilled. Thrilled. um, uh, yeah. How did uh, Alicia, how did she do Miss Silverstone? Thrilled that she was included. Um, a really tender performance, I thought. Obviously, very caring. I could have used a little more. She's another one where I could have used, you know, crank it up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, however, I think she really comes into the role as the movie progresses. I think, you know, we get her in the suit. We get the close-up on on the ass, the boobs. She's got her yeah. beauty mark. Now that she's Batgirl, I, it's, mm -hmm. we need the transition. For me, the transition to Batgirl really helped. Yes. Yes. Real quick, I want to go over to Clayton because I you name dropped Captain Cold, so I think you're you're a nerd like me. Um, were you bumped by the different origin story of Batgirl? Because um, she is always Commissioner Gordon's da uh, daughter, right? Um, no, that that did not. It was one of those things where I was like, "Wait, what? This is the plot of this movie?" Because again, I've seen it so many times, but I totally forgotten that she's like Alfred's niece because mm -hmm. Alfred has this extended family. But I was like, "Wait, I don't remember any of these other characters out here, like the Pennyworth uh, lineage or what have you." I was really uh, I also a little bit confused as to what the point of her bringing up like i'm saving alfred from this like life of ser servitude right. and I was like well, i don't know if this movie really wants to grapple with all the questions we have about this <laughs> this relationship it was wild stuff when she starts bringing that up and you can see robin getting like visibly uncomfortable, Very uncomfortable. Like, oh, don't, don't talk about that that's a, yeah. like yeah. He, he's happy he's happy doing this so this guy has two weeks to live i guess with um mcgregor's disease i think is what they call it mm -hmm. yeah uh, and, stage you know, one stage one but mm -hmm. you know he he lives with those selfish superhero boys always putting on their capes and nipples never noticing <laughs> old alfred and his dying nipples but yeah so barbara her plan is that she'll race her she'll motorcycle race um she'll yes. tokyo drift her way into getting the funds yes to fix what she plan. has she she's successful yeah. i mean she's done it yes um katie i want to go to that um that motorcycle scene with Robin. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot in this movie that defies the laws of physics. Mm -hmm. Um, The scene where like, so these bikers are like, we're going to 
you know, wreck her motorcycle. Yeah. Did you see when the, the bikes tipped over and they like skirted to the edge of a bridge? But the bridge was like flat. So why were they sliding? Mm-hmm. Was it <laughs> did was it was the road tilted? I thought gravity would have just slowed them, but they were like, oh no, we're sliding to the end. Like No, the, that's a great point. What did you think was happening with the road? I think I just bought into it. I think that like mm-hmm. everything about this world, I really I didn't question much about this movie. I really didn't. I was just okay. like aggressively on board. I see. I see. I did wonder uh, what was gonna happen if they hadn't gotten wrecked right there by the mm-hmm. end of the bridge. I was like, were they supposed to do a jump or like where they yeah. go from here? Yeah, what yeah. is the course of this race? Or maybe maybe that's like the finish line or something. Because like the guy yeah. lights it on fire because they're so tired. Ty- she's been winning so much. Like, well, let's right. Get her. Well, she's been winning for two days mm-hmm. since she got here. Um, and Me we cool, must yeah. assume she was also Tokyo drifting in Oxford, England, oh, which is oh, for sure. It came with some cash. I mean, not Oxford, Oxbridge, I think wait, is what the wait, version go back. Of it is. Are you talking this whole movie? Is this over the course of three days, this whole movie? Doesn't it seem like it is? I think so, yeah. I thought it would I mean, I least... feel like Barbara arrives. She takes Robin's motorcycle the first night. We assume, wow. you know, they're, they're doing these races every night. She wins yeah. once. She goes back the next day. This is when Robin catches her in and the act. The day after that, she's back, girl. Yeah, I think so. And she's Damn. she's by that point won enough money to um, relieve Alfred of his responsibilities with the Waynes. He would never. He would never leave. No, no. He's like bury me next to the Waynes, the parents. Absolutely. Yeah, that, that's my sister. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Who I love with all my heart. But then she died five years ago, so forget her. I'm being buried in the Wayne plot. Yeah, and he just didn't tell Bruce like, like oh, my family died, like because Bruce could relate. To yeah, family. never never came up. You know, he didn't want to make it about him. His life is about Bruce. Okay, I'll say that people who sigh heavily in the background may say they don't want to make it about them. They do. They want mm-hmm. attention. Uh, nobody looking at me. <laughs> Fucking oh, God, I hate this Alfred. Sorry, this is he hasn't been here yet, but I miss Michael Caine. You know mm. what I mean. I, I really need a Michael Caine out. I know, badly. I know. Can you imagine this? I mean, because you're right. Alfred, this Alfred is really the biggest disappointment of the movie. Can you imagine everything about this movie? Change nothing. Just drop in Michael Caine. How great that would be. That's a slam. I mean. Do you think Do you think George Clooney would have phoned it in if Michael Caine was on set? He couldn't have. No. Absolutely. There's no way. There's no way. I feel like Michael Caine pulled a performance out of Kermit the Frog, but he could never have given it. <laughs> he uh, just levels everybody up. God, I can't wait. Um, but we're not there yet, so we have to talk about the plot of Batman and Robin. Um, Clayton Murchison, um, let's do this. Can you tell what what's the plan? What's the what's the what's the bad guy's plan? Okay, so Mister Freeze wants to get money from the city that's basically the goal which i was like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you're like a brilliant scientist apply for a grant you know you probably get one he but, needs uh, billions of dollars for yeah this that's they did true. drop that billions right mm-hmm. and i'm like you know couldn't the waynes kind of step in here but nah, that's not gonna happen he's an academic so he's never getting that funding um uh, so <laughs> instead he <laughs> decides to hold the city hostage but then he thinks batman killed his wife because poison ivy lied to him so then he's like down for wiping out all of humanity it seems and she's of course that was her goal all along because she wants to reclaim the planet for the plants which i think also wouldn't do well in an ice age to be honest well she claims to have these like special little plants that can survive anything doesn't right. she have like a little glass jar of like a little yeah. spy trap or yeah. something? Audrey too. The yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes, yes. The, oh wow, they really are a little shop coated. Those two. Um, suddenly I freeze. <laughs> I really love seeing freezes. Uh, the machine that he just needed the one more diamond. Like all mm. these perfectly identical giant diamonds, and he just needs one more. Just one. Um. Also. Quick shout out to Vivica A. Fox, who had a brief cameo yeah. as Mr. Freeze's girl. Why is she yeah. there? Yeah. He's clearly hung up on his wife and he has, yeah. but she's not on the fighting squad. So what is she? I think just she arm doing? candy? Is she an escort? 
she must be and i don't know if you guys looked at the credits she is credited uh her name is miss b haven love i did great. not notice that <laughs> love always stay for the credits people need to know uh yeah. don't walk out um don't leave. Don't leave. or you know don't go to a different movie on your streamer my uh, um my max pulled up clueless next and i was like all right max <laughs> all right we know what you're you got me in for a double feature for. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes so that is their plan and then honestly the only thing that is like standing in our hero's way is their ego i want to go to katie nathan um give us that coverage what is the conflict between batman and robin or well, titular it's, heroes? it's uh you know classic it's a woman yeah wouldn't you know it yeah wouldn't you know it and I mean, again, I go back to thinking, like, how old is Robin supposed to be? And he thinks mm -hmm. he thinks he and George are like going after the same girl. It's like, is he 19? And Batman is in his 40s. Yeah, well, I think Batman, I think he he loosely said somewhere in his 30s because he's like, Alfred, you've been answering the door for 30 years. Or right. Something. Yes. So uh, he has to be 30 something. And I at best Robin 22 i yeah. can't imagine he'd be older than that but yeah i mean poison ivy with her love potion mm -hmm. has um Almost. has completely uh pitted our heroes against each other mm -hmm. her eyebrows too oh my god her double eyebrows yeah the double she... eyebrows the double eyebrows i just do want to take a minute and i i'm upset for el mcpherson in this movie i really am uh, who is Elle McPherson? Who is this? Uh, George's girlfriend, Batman's girlfriend. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, Julie. Her character Julie, is Julie. Julie, yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what a lovely character. Mm -hmm. Batman refuses to commit. We get it. He's a dedicated bachelor. But then he's like saying Ivy to her face and she's just letting these things slide. She's so understanding. Yeah, yeah, she shows up to the benefit with him after that. I was like, are you yeah. kidding? <laughs> I mean, this telescope just, again? We've already been to this telescope. We were just here. I, gonna... I had Bruce, to take the it. walkway up the arm again. This is, uh, <laughs> I'm wearing a dress. I can't be doing this all the time. <laughs> Climbing these statues. Yeah, justice for her. It is wild. Um, I feel like every movie, there's been like a strong love interest story. And this is the first one where there's kind of not. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's it's really forgotten yeah and i'm like where's vicky vale where's mm. catwoman where's oh my god what was her name in batman forever chase meridian dr chase meridian chase mm. meridian wow played by nicole kidman <laughs> where, an, an amazing part amazing. i uh also talking about batman and robin having an argument it took me the longest time to remember that robin's name is dick grayson so yes a scene where uh when he goes to him, she's trying to kill you, dick. Yes. <laughs> it's like, was, just came out dick. of nowhere. Like, you uh, can't do that. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Did you did you hear when Alfred was like Master Dick? Uh, <laughs> I was like, does it have to be that? <laughs> <laughs> I think it does. Uh, dick Grayson, uh, one of the greats. Um, uh, yes. So. Batman and Robin, they have this kind of, and there's also like this like thing about the uh, partnership. Are we partners? Right. Blah, blah, blah. Do we trust each other? Is Batman, you know, trying to control Robin? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was successful. Did you hear how they said the same thing to each other three times? Yes. The uh, <laughs> trusting someone is the only way to win sometimes. Or... Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you need to help need you need help from others to win or something yeah something like it's that. a little wordy it's we yeah. could have i think trim some of the fat off of that moral it's not the like with great power comes great responsibility yeah, it doesn't quite get on the bumper oh, sticker yeah um da, 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 da. let's see uh poison ivy gets a new wait okay wait hold on hold on before i go to poison ivy i want to talk about mr freeze Arnold schwarzenegger i don't greatest role he's ever done oh yeah he has a line and I wrote it down. He at one point says, that's my exit cue. And I'm like, did he mean to say that's my cue to exit? Right. And I <laughs> wonder Give it in, he, Joel. I wonder if he inverted some lines. I remember in commando, he was still learning English. Mm -hmm. So he had to do all these um, 
quips, you know, kind of like phonetically. Like he just had to remember how they sounded. He didn't really understand what he was saying. And here I'm like, he has no excuse. He knows what he's saying. And it's he really is a master of it at this point. But yeah, there are moments where you're like, I don't know if he totally nailed that one. <laughs> That's yeah. my exit cue. It's like, wait. It makes me wonder, do you think, I mean, with how understated George Clooney's performance was, do you think that Arnold ever showed up to set and was like, am I doing this wrong? Like, Mm -hmm. am I bringing too much to this role? No, I don't think so. And uh, we didn't even say this beginning. Top build. It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. You're right. George Clooney. You're right. Arnold's like, this is my movie. Yeah, you're right. Uh, which is so funny because uh, when I talked about the 1989 Batman, same thing with Jack Nicholson. He got the top. Oh, interesting. Uh, interesting. Yeah. I wonder if, if Arnold sort of like, give me the Nicholson. We do. <laughs> also, I mean, should, we, should we be doing more Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions? I feel like. I think Is so. that what people are coming here for? <laughs> what did the dinosaurs die of? The ice Age! <laughs> There's so many. You know, uh, he had open heart surgery in the middle of this movie. No. Shut up. Yeah, and what? this is this. I, I know way too much about this How? movie. Um, I, I, I think it was like, you know, nearing the end of production and he had something going on. And so he went in for open heart surgery and Joel Schumacher called him when he was recovering in the hospital. And uh, Schwartz like, you know, was like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. You know, just taking it one day at a time. <laughs> and Schumacher's like, wow, you sound really weak, Arnold. And he's like, yeah, well, you know. And Schumacher's like, you know, you'd be perfect right now to shoot Mr. Freeze's death scene. Like, do you think you could do it? <laughs> wow. But really, what a guy, you know? Wow. <laughs> what a guy. And, and he he did look bad in those scenes. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, yeah. that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Um, right. But I, I got to give it, Ar- like, the scene where he's, like, struggling in the prison, going away from, like, the ice beam. Like, I think, I don't know. I've never seen him act that way. Like, like, and maybe it's the makeup. But it's like his bloodshot eyes. Like, yeah. it's yeah. just, you I've never seen him. him. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Also, I forgot to say during that motorcycle race, do we see Coolio? Do you see that Coolio cameo? Yes. Oh, yes. He's the one who like. Thank you. Thank you for going back for that. I, Gangster's Paradise. I could not believe it. Um, my wife was hoping to see him during the scene where everyone's getting frozen. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so great for it's... frozen Coolio to be like taking money. <laughs> oh no. Um, okay. As we head into the big climax, I want to give time for the most iconic haircut of Poison Ivy. The double, I call it, I called it the double cone head. Um, mm, mm-hmm. where she just kind of, it looked like she has like little like spools of yarn. Um, yeah, on top of her head. that's Which full think... drag queen for her. I feel like. Oh yeah, uh, and she had. I mean, would anyone like to say the iconic line that was so nice? They said it twice. Was it the? As, uh, as the told... Mr. It, no, it wasn't the Nora Freeze line. Oh, it was. I thought it was yeah. going to be my vines have a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> that oh, I love that one, but it's the um, as I told Lady Freeze, this is a one woman show. <laughs> And she said it, and then, of course, Batman was recording it, and they played it again. <laughs> he makes him watch the movie for a minute, and Mr. Freeze is like, ah! Yeah! Watch this movie, Freeze. Watch, look at what you've done. <laughs> look, at, look at what we're making. Um, so, uh, also, okay, Alfred, I mean, we talked we talk about this, but Alfred gave his dying wish he gave barbara a cd rom and she yep. unlocks it it's her mother's nickname peg which seems dangerously unsafe as a password it's just three the character password a three character password alfred well that's what you get written here. on your desk like yeah. within view mm-hmm. of the computer but still takes uh still takes barbara four tries five tries to figure it out yeah even that's that human. computer voice is kind of horned up too she's like yeah. allowed <laughs> also i want to i want to um just call out the thinking faces that Alicia oh. Silverstone her when she's trying to figure out the pass the password. Yeah, mm-hmm. biting her lip like, geez, yeah. what could it be? <laughs> what could it be? Uh, but then also in that scene, it looks like she's like about to start watching Batman and Robin because like the last scene is the bat and the Robin symbol. I'm like, is she starting the movie? <laughs> yeah. Did Rod? Did wait? Did did, did did Alfred make that graphic? Like, <laughs> I guess he did. 
<laughs> he's in like CAD or whatever. He's like, okay, I can kind of see. This. Okay, yeah, no, this works. It's always like, what does Alfred know? Like, wh- yes, what is his skill set? It's like, I feel like in the more current time, Batman's, it's more like he's more physical, but there's always this like technological prowess he has. I'm just like, oh, okay. An all purpose. Well, and let's not forget that he made her a suit. I mean, he that's did. a talent mm-hmm. to itself. Right. Yeah, they, <laughs> it they really don't emphasize the boobs, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> His niece, who he hasn't seen in years, he made a custom rubber suit that fits her perfectly. Yeah. Yeah. He has her measurements. You'll look absolutely snatched in this <laughs> outfit, Barbara. That's my Alfred. That's my Alfred. Um, I don't know. I at one point Batman throws Robin in some goop. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was really silly. Yeah, I thought he was gonna turn into the Joker for a second. Right? Because that's what happens in Gotham when you fall in green green shit. Um, could turn into a clown. Sorry, I'm just doing shout outs at this point. Just things I want to just say. Um, my favorite, my favorite Mr. Freeze line is like, "We'll be Adam and evil." <laughs> <laughs> There's a shot uh, almost 50, I think it's like not quite an hour into the movie. So about halfway through, because this movie's two hours, which is also incredible, flies mm-hmm. by. And uh, when Please. Mr. Freeze gets captured because Batman punches through the window of his car right after Arnold goes, uh-oh, which is <laughs> great, <laughs> really great. But then Batman like reveals Mr. Freeze with like a swoosh of the cape and he's lying prone in front of Batman and it looks his eyes are open and I was like oh he killed him he murdered (laughs) off camera oh my god I think that idea is supposed to be like it was such an epic fight that he's like shocked like I can't believe what Batman just did to me like it's so crazy you you don't even want to see it kids (laughs) I'll say this was supposed to be this is supposed to be for the kids this horny ass movie which is why I was so shocked when I heard dick yeah (laughs) right yeah I was like, this is for the kids. It's PG. It's for the, yeah. It's P- is this rated PG? I think, I think so. so. They say yeah. hell like twice. I, I don't, I mean, they, they, I would love if they dropped an F-bomb at some point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure it's PG only. It's, yeah, it, this was that era where it was like, you yeah. made stuff for kids, but you didn't really know what mm-hmm. kids like. So you made stuff kind of mm-hmm. that like your teenage, you know, son recommended to you. Yeah. You know, which is wow, I think Batman got made in the first place. It was just like somebody's son was like, You gotta watch you gotta make this into a movie, Dad, and they were just had enough yeah. money to do it. Because it's it, it is wild how horned up and like truly uh like graphic at times the movie is like the, mm-hmm. you know, the shots of the butt the like yeah <laughs> the strip tease poison ivy i was just like oh my god no yeah. wonder i thought this is a little preteen <laughs> oh yeah the one thing i love from batman forever that they continue in here i love the progression of the villain outfits i feel like jim mm, carrey's yes. riddler got more yes. and more exaggerated and yes this final look for poison ivy with like this bouffant Incredible. marie antoinette wig and to your point, the double eyebrows, the double mm-hmm. eye shadow, I mean, incredible. When she prints in her, like, the reflection of her knife at one point, yes. I She's was like, like, that's the best moment of the movie. <laughs> so good. This woman, what was in that toxic venom that she got doused with? <laughs> it changed more than just her her lip chemistry. Um, Seriously. And uh, can anyone tell me? what happened to poison ivy she just she fell onto that plant and it just went sloop i think so like, yeah and yeah but doesn't i don't know does it wasn't she sitting there before why did yes that... she at one point she comes she's revealed by a plant mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the petals open there she is and i guess you know the lord giveth and he take it away, take it away. And she is messed up in that cell at the end. Like yeah. she looks yeah. like she's been oh, through yeah. it. And you're like, what? What did I miss? Did the There's plan meth like- in this cell? <laughs> I think I realized when I watched this, like, oh, there was a time when I was a child, I thought you could eat a flower petal, and I realized it's because of this movie. Oh. <laughs> Cause she like eat she takes a yeah. tiny little nibble, and I'm like, that's where I got that from. Yeah. That's crazy. It's I don't okay. want to skip over though, Robin and his saran wrap on his lips. Katie. Thank you so much. Yes. I mean, um, wax lips. He says, I think he says rubber lips, doesn't he? Oh, rubber lips. Okay. He's like, I got you with my rubber lips. And he just pulls off a piece of saran wrap. 
I can't think of anything hotter. I thought about <laughs> that scene for a long time. How old was in ninety seven? I had to have been nine years old. I I thought about that scene a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. He um, got me, man. When when she went in to kiss him, I'm you know I'm sitting on my couch. I'm like, no, don't do it, don't do it. And we have all these near miss kisses leading up to that, where the lips almost touch, but you know he gets pulled away. And then and then they connect, and I'm like, oh my god. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh! But he made it through. Our little yeah. boy wonder, Robin. Mm-hmm. He you know he can do things on his own. Yeah, Batman. Yeah, even though it's like Batgirl who saves him in the end. <laughs> so. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, Batgirl flies in. Did you catch that? Like, we have the Poison Ivy fight, and then when they go to get at, go after Freeze, completely new outfits. Like, yeah, they like went. Like, they, they stopped by the Batcave to get their winter gear. Oh, yeah. I don't think I did catch that. It's like everything's just a little bit. There's like silver um, outlinings on those bad outfits that are different than what they were wearing. Yeah, with Ivy and they they have their new vehicles. The like yeah. <laughs> the fan <laughs> like a Zamboni that Robin's I driving. Can't... Oh, it's so good. And it was Zamboni. Like, okay. Oh, it's so wild. And then Alicia Silver, or, uh, Batgirl's just on like a motorcycle. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. You, I don't think you need anything else. That's fine. Yeah. I always loved how like she's on the motorcycle and she's got the bat cowl, like the mm-hmm. little bat ears. And as soon as she gets off, she like rips it off. And I'm like, why did you, why, why, why did you even have it? You know, something that struck me during this scene too, is they've got their, their masks, their eye masks. And I didn't realize, I think, until this scene that the eye holes are so large that they have to apply eye shadow around their eyes as well yeah. to make it look the way to achieve the look that we're going for. So we're mm-hmm. meant to believe that before they put on their masks, they're also applying black eye shadow around their eyes. Yes. Uh, I think it's supposed to be more like, you know, when you're like in the military, like you're putting on the camouflage, like uh, just yes. smearing it on. Yes. Which is what it's supposed to be, but it is very manicured because it's the 90s. So it it, it was like the perfect eye yes. shape. Um, you can kind of see it on um, a Batgirl after she takes her mask off at the end when they're like yes. standing over Alfred's bed. And you're like, oh, she didn't mm-hmm. quite get it all off. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> well, nice she still time. has like the beauty mark that she gave mm-hmm. herself. Oh, yeah. The Marilyn Monroe beauty mark when she's Batgirl. Does that work? Does that help with the disguise? Do people not know who that is? I, I, I don't know how you could. I don't know how you could know that it was her. Mm, t- true. Yeah, true. a domino and this long blonde hair. Long blonde hair. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then she immediately is like, "It's me. It's <laughs> it's Barbara." Because <laughs> they Bruce. didn't figure it out. Bruce, it's me, Barbara. I'm that girl. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I guess she was like, well, "I'm not going to do the secret identity. I'm just going to skip that." Um. Okay. I think we have to move on to our final segment um, because we are going to do a supersized version for this supersized episode. Uh, listeners, I have been convinced to do a double fuck, Mary kill. <clears throat> Never done this. Michael, have we ever done this on the podcast? A double, a, a, a double fuck, Mary kill. Um, this movie is just too good, Michael. And um, we, we got to do it for the heroes as well, the, as well as the villains. So um, let's start with our, our heroes because I think it's going to go quick for me. Uh, <laughs> Batman, Robin, Batgirl, a fuck, Mary kill. I'll just uh, right off the bat. I'm going to, Ooh, I'm so sorry. Oh no, this is hard. I love her. I'm going to kill Batgirl. Uh, just, I know. I know nothing against her. I Process just, of elimination. yeah, yeah. I have bigger Great. fish to fry. Agreed. Um, I'm going to fuck uh, Batman. I think Bruce Wayne, we didn't see it a lot in here because, you know, phoning in a performance, but there's a lot of trauma in uh, mm-hmm, old, bat, mm-hmm, old bats. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I guess there, there's all, I mean, Robin lost his entire family, but um, he seems more open and willing mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. be a partner and grow. So I'm going to marry, I'm going to marry the bird. Mm-hmm. Bird boy. Uh, let's go to Katie Nathan next as our most senior guest. Thank you so much. I, I have the same, um, uh, just struggle. And I, I do have to kill Batgirl process of elim- elimination. Um, Mary Batman, it's the manor for me. It's the wealth and fuck Robin because um, he's like just thirsty enough. He's just needy enough. He's going to work really hard. Ooh, I never thought of it that way. Also love the phrase. It's the manor for me. Uh, 
Clayton Murchison. Yeah, got to marry Batman. It's for the money. You know what I'm you talking about? Go back to also, it's Clooney. He's got that tequila money. I mean, this is yeah. really out of this world. I, I forgot about Casamigos. Thank you. <laughs> How could you forget? Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I just to fulfill a lifelong dream, probably would have sex with Batgirl. And uh, <laughs> would, yeah, unfortunately, have to kill Robin by process of elimination. Oh. But, you know, if, if we don't want any yeah. of these people to go. I mean, this is hard. Yeah, no, you know, not. and Chris O'Donnell, like, you know, he's a very attractive man. I love that Three Musketeers movie he was in. Oh, my God. No, did you did you see when he was on Grey's back in season two of Grey's Anatomy? Oh, no. Uh, he, he played, a, he played a, a, a veterinarian and oh. she he did Meredith and everyone made fun of her because she was dating a vet and not a, a real doctor. <laughs> it was very funny. That's great. So rude. It was. And you know what, Katie? It was. A um, doctor. <laughs> Not not according to the surgeons on Grace. I know it's very like Ross on Friends. Like everyone's like, "You're not a doctor." Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, now normally, listeners, that would be it. But no, no, no. Mm. We have a second wave coming your way. Uh, the villain, fuck Mary mm. Kill. Uh, and it just it does make so much sense because we've got three villains. We've got Mister Freeze, Poison Ivy, and Bubba Bubba Bane. I for this one, I'm gonna kill Bane. Not really sure what's going on there. Also, it's a little unattractive to me that when they like pull the cord on the back of him, he just kind of deflates. <laughs> it's just it's really it's misleading. Pla- yeah, it's giving flaccid. Uh, and I just uh, no. Um, I will. Ooh, this is hard. I will fuck Mister Freeze because I'll tell you what. Out of the suit, that smooth blue stuff i was into it i was into <laughs> it it'd probably be really cold this that i mean that'll be the that'll be the hard part you can't get too hot because he'll die um but then i'll marry poison ivy because mm. because i'm not an idiot i'll say that because <laughs> that when you get a chance to shoot your shot with, <laughs> with the ivy you take it and she could make anything beautiful, and hopefully she'll let me live and forgive me for not being a plant. R- reverse, uh, Clayton, please. Uh, who are your villain picks? All right, yeah. I unfortunately, I think I gotta kill Mister Freeze, but so he can be with his wife. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. um, I guess she's not technically dead. She's but, still you know. alive. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know, close enough. Uh, <laughs> we'll round up on that one. Um, I do. I do like his sparkly makeup. So, uh, mm-hmm. but no, I think I'd have sex with Bane mostly to hear what word he says. Like, <laughs> I guess he only says um. one. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, great. Monkey. Monkey work. <laughs> Oh man, so wild! What a character! Um, and then, yeah, I have to marry Poison Ivy uh, just because. I mean, how could you not? As you said, <laughs> you how got the you opportunity. And you might be the last. You could be the Adam to her evil, my man. Like, why not? Especially uh, in your scenario, if you're killing Mister Freeze, you're right. I, listen, I used to. I mean, used to. I'm still kind of in love with Uma Thurman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, huge crush on her. Oh, fantastic. Um, I think Clayton, Katie, uh, bring us home. I was not expecting this, but you all, you really did. I mean, a great case for marrying Poison Ivy. I'm going to, I'm going to marry Mr. Freeze though. I, I need a man who's going to throw it all away to bring me back from a terminal illness. True. true, true. That's what I want in a husband. I am going to fuck Poison Ivy. She's got to bring the vines. She's crazy. (laughs) And by process of elimination again, I am very curious. I would be very curious to fuck Bane, but curiosity is not enough for me. I have to kill Bane. Ah, wow. Very nice. I love it. And I love it when we're all uh, choosing different paths. Me too. I do too. I love to hear, you know, thought process. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, that was hey, our one more thing about Bane. Oh, I'm please. sorry. Uh, when he jumps into the water, uh, he's like laughing his ass off, which is great. <laughs> but uh, it's right after it's like, I hope Mr. Bane can swim. And I was really hoping he'd yell, swim. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, I was hoping he would just sink. I guess they just survived. Anyone in yeah. Arkham could just jump out of their towering cell into this ocean yeah. lake. Incredible. It looks I like a lot no of jagged rocks. I have no questions about it. <laughs> None. Nor I, nor I, except Alfred. That's my my only negative. 
Um, so that's fuck Mary Kill. That is Batman and Robin. Um, d- yeah. Anything we have not discussed that you want put one into thing, the recording? One thing. Yeah. Uh, Barbara's character. I mean, the whole movie. A little dumb. A little dumb. The thinking faces. Mm-hmm. You know the. Mm-hmm. Then coming out at the end, and it's like we're gonna need a computer genius, and she grabs the machine. And I love that moment for her. I love that yeah. she has it, but it doesn't feel consistent to me. No, they like use that moment of like, "Wow, glad she's on our team." She's like a fit, and I'm like, right. I don't know. Yeah, there there could have been a more consistent thread of her doing yes. smart things, and also yes, just maybe- that's what I needed. I just needed a little more, a little more smart. Yeah, and like, why didn't we do the classic like she gets saved by Batman, and she's like, "You seem familiar," and it sets her on a path of like finding out his identity of like oh shit yeah. i'm living with batman yeah fair enough fair enough um all right bring, oh one yeah. more thing please and this is this is so absolutely insane but the movie ends on the three of them like yes. first barbara and dick shake hands and then clooney's giant hand comes in <laughs> and, all of them. and the last shot of the movie before they run at the camera in their suits is the hands and then Clooney's giant hand on top and the camera zooms on his hand. <laughs> it's like Batman and Robin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, you wanted like all hands in the air, like, like they throw them up. <laughs> just, yeah. Just a shot of three hands. And it's like, I'm not sure. Well, all right, sure. Why not? We started with the <laughs> hockey team. We're going to end here. Goodbye. <laughs> what happened to the hockey team? Hockey team from hell. Yeah, they were laying low when Freeze was on ice, as it were. Huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, when when he gets out, they're like immediately back. And I was like, were they not arrested? <laughs> they were just, <laughs> like, uh, aiding and abetting. We'll let it slide this time. Yeah. You know what I would have loved at the end? Instead of running toward the camera, if they had skated toward the camera. Oh, my God. Pop those blades out for one more spin. The speed one skate, more. too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Or just like, that's a question, Barbara, like, and why do I have skates in my high heel boots? <laughs> do you guys usually use skates? Uh, you, you gotta earn the skates. Mm-hmm. You gotta earn the skates. And I think we've earned a fantastic episode of this podcast. Um, thank you both so much for being here. Um, thank you. Uh, what a joy. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. I, sh- I should have said at the top, we're going to go along. And Michael, I bet this, is, this might be one of our longer episodes. Um, and I don't want to take back a minute of it except for the parts that i said has it been almost 90 minutes (laughs) almost yeah uh so let's (laughs) let's wrap this up uh please um katie nathan where are you online any socials anything you want to promote uh yeah if you are in los angeles i perform at herald night at ucb my team is called power of attorney and social media i am hiya like hiya katie lady Hi, Katie Liddy. Very nice. Power of Attorney is a fantastic name. uh, Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Clayton Margerson, uh, same question for you. All right. If you're in Chicago and uh, you know the IO Theater, I play uh, with Armando every now and then. That's Thursdays at 730. And also Logan Square Improv uh, out in Logan Square. That's uh, every Sunday night at 8 p.m. <laughs> 8 p.m. Uh, <laughs> at 8 p.m. I play with uh, late 90s, uh, my long running uh, improv team. We have a lot of fun uh, and we play with little heroes uh, who are another fantastic team. So come check that out. And I'm on uh, at king dot class on uh, Instagram. I almost said at Gmail dot com. That's wrong. <laughs> um, uh, so, yeah, check me out on Instagram. Uh, I post very infrequently, but I would love to see your pictures. So let's get nuts. Yes, let's get nuts. Um, fantastic. They're both so funny. Like, as you've heard, go go see them. Chicago, LA, get out of the house. Um, uh, this is Podcast 616. You can follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Podcast 616P3. That P3 stands for Press Play Podcast, our podcasting network that lets me talk about Batman on a Marvel podcast. This is anarchy. Um, you can also follow me, Damon, on Instagram at Black Chandler. Black is spelled B-L-K, and Chandler is spelled like Chandler Bing. Um, producer Michael, if you want to hop on the mic real quick, what letter grade would you give this podcast that we just did? Yeah, I will never watch this again, ever in my life. But uh, I'm going to give you guys an A double plus. Thank you, and never say never. Uh, thank you, Michael. Thank you, Clayton. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Batman and Robin. Thank you, George Clooney, for always getting me to my happy place um 
we'll be back next week shifting gears uh so say goodbye to the happy-go-lucky batman because we're going dark y'all we're going dark and gritty and real my sweet spot uh we'll be back uh next week with the nolan of it all but until that time please remember that with great power comes even greater responsibility